Welcome everyone, I'm Yvette. I'm a graduate assistant here at the iCreate Makerspace at the Mary and Jeff Bell Library at TAMU CC. So today I'm gonna go through a step-by-step -step process of how to make a cloth face mask, much like this one. So there are many different designs of masks out there, but the one we're gonna be focusing on is the pleated mask, which also includes a nose piece. The first step of any project is to make sure you have all your supplies. You will need fabric, a pair of scissors or rotary cutter, a ruler, a pen or pencil, elastic bias tape or ribbon, an iron, pins, a seam ripper for any mistakes, pipe cleaner, and of course the sewing machine. Today I have two types of fabric with me. I have a quilter's cotton and a duck cotton. So when you are thinking of making a mask, what you're gonna wanna do is take your fabric and kind of double it over and kind of put it over your mouth. Make sure you can breathe easy through it. If you can't breathe easy through it, this may not be the right fabric for a mask for you. Um, you can also utilize an old t-shirt that's cotton and kind of cut that up to make a mask. Now let's start on the project. Take your fabric and flip it onto the wrong side. Use the ruler and a pen to measure the shape. You will want it 15 inches long by 8.5 inches wide. Draw it out with the pen and then get your scissors and cut. If you are using a rotary cutter, make sure to have a self-healing board underneath so you don't cut the table. You'll take the fabric and fold it hamburger style with the wrong side facing you and use the pins and ruler to leave a 3 inch gap at the top. This will be how you pull the fabric through and potentially an opening for a filter. With the needles in, go ahead and run the fabric through your sewing machine from the edge to the needle on both sides. Doing a back stitch before the full stitch helps make the stitches tight. For additional support on this stitch, you can do a vertical stitch from the stitch you just put in to the top of the pin to keep the hole from fraying. Once those stitches are in place, you can remove the pins and rotate the material so the seam you created will be at the center. Iron the material and the seam down to help keep the fabric flat. Next, I'm going to take my elastic and cut two strips that are seven inches. This next step can be done by hand or machine. First, you will put the elastic strips on both sides, pinning them into the corners. Make sure the elastic is pushed inwards and not twisted. Stitch the elastic corners to keep them in place, then remove the pins. Make sure the elastic is inside the pocket, then stitch entirely across the edge. Repeat this for the other side. If you accidentally sew the elastic in at any point, you'll need to use the seam ripper and restitch the area. Turn the mask inside out through the three inch hole in the center back. You can use the back of the pen to push out the corners. You'll need the iron and ruler for this next part. With your pencil, make a mark with three lines across the mask. Use the ruler to make sure the pleating lines are equal width. Now you'll pleat the fabric at these three lines and you can hold them in place with a pin and ironing over. Make sure all the pleats are going in the same direction. You will then sew down the sides as close to the edge to keep the pleats in place. Make sure your seams are tight and go through all the layers of fabric. Once this is done, you can do the optional step of putting in the nose piece. I found this helps hold the mask on better and also helps with glasses fogging. Cut a pipe cleaner at four inches, put inside the mask using the hole you pulled the fabric out of. Make sure the pleats are going down from the nose piece. Once the pipe cleaner is inside at the top, center it up and stitch around it to keep it in place. And there you have it, you have a fully functioning mask. As you can see, you'll probably just need to go through, trim up some of the loose thread. Um, the hole in the back, you can choose to sew it closed. Or what you can do is buy a filter to put inside it, so then you have sort of that third layer. Um, biggest thing about filters is please make sure you do your research so that you're getting a filter that is okay to be this close to your face. I hope this has been a helpful video for you. 
If you have any more creative questions, please feel free to contact the iCreate Lab and have a great day.